let's get into it. NES Switch, the presentation happened January 13th, mm -hmm. and uh, we watched it. First off, well, since we're talking about the NES, I've got a we we need to issue a correction. Yeah. On last week's episode, we talked about the NES Classic Edition being hacked, and the uh, ever so graceful uh, subscribers to the NES Classic Mod subreddit pointed out that we were incorrect in how that, in how much space the NES Classic that you has. Were, that you were wrong as shit. Apparently, it's 513 megabytes. Five, and 512? Five, five, oh, Was sorry. 512 five, five, five to 513. Yeah. Um, and we were wrong. I said it was 4 gigabytes. I read it somewhere. I'm sorry. Um, but I guess I was wrong, and they were all up in arms. Well, we can't be uh, throwing misinformation around With, with pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that being said... Uh, if you listen to last week's podcast, that's incorrect. So yep. I would hate for you to just think that it has that there's that much in that insane amount of space. Right, is when, actually on it when there's really not. There is not. Okay, um, but anyway, the NES Classic Edition, um, the pre I'm sorry, the NES Switch, the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I'm I'm stuck in in the other the other console. Uh, the the Nintendo Switch presentation happened on the 13th of uh of january and <laughs> so we watched it what, what were your impressions chris on the nes switch well, uh, or the nintendo switch because initially i watched uh just like trailers like i'd seen that nintendo's youtube page post a bunch of trailers and stuff so i checked those out i watched a bunch of those and uh then you were talking to me about um uh, there we go <laughs> Uh, then uh, you were talking to me about something with the uh, like the Joy-Con controllers uh, and to look into that a little bit. And I, I was like, OK. So then I found the entire press conference, started watching that from the very beginning. I was right. like, OK, this this looks really cool. <laughs> it does. It does look really cool. But I'm afraid that they're going to go into that Wii territory of this is just a gimmick. Mm -hmm. And I, I've got to say, I was a little underwhelmed with the launch lineup oh yeah no very light launch lineup four to five games mm -hmm. i think um the bomberman zelda breath of the wild one two switch and then maybe one other in, well yeah because it didn't yeah. look like arms was even going to be available right at launch right um speaking of zelda breath of the wild though hey it's coming out for the wii u yep so you know what that means i'm probably not going to get a switch at launch not at launch not especially when there's only four or five games available <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, much. okay, but like I don't have a Wii U, so like if I have the money, I might go ahead and pick up a Switch. Save your tax return, right? Right. <laughs> Maybe that's why they put it out in March. Maybe. Um, some of the bigger games that were announced: uh, Super Mario Odyssey, mm -hmm. which looks like that looks very strange to me. It looks like a spiritual successor to Super Mario sixty four. Oh yeah, very much. Not so. so much as the Super Mario Galaxy series, which was incredible. Mm -hmm by the way. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing that they announced that I'm pretty excited about is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Yeah, I saw Ooh. that, and I knew you would right. uh, lose your shit for well, it. Well, that's a sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles, which was on the Wii. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't played that game. I'm still looking for a good deal mm. on that game. They have one at our local GameStop, but it's $53 <laughs> used. For a Wii game? For a Wii game. <laughs> now, the deal with Xenoblade Chronicles is it was... You know, released in Japan, wide release. Mm -hmm. It was released in America, GameStop exclusive. Really? Right. So that's why it's kind of maybe a little bit harder to find than some of the other Wii titles. So you can't even get it like on Amazon or you, anything? Well, you can, but they're all used. Mm -hmm. You can't find new copies. And if you do, they're really expensive. Right. Um, but that's around, this, that's around the price that I'm finding it for. Now, they do have it on the virtual console. For Wii U, for around fifteen to twenty dollars. Mm. So the problem with the Wii U and the problem with the Switch, it's only got thirty-two gigabytes of internal memory. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't have a whole lot of space on there, so I don't know if I'm going to be doing that as far as a virtual console game. I might. Mm. Uh, it just depends. Now, Xenoblade Chronicles also was released for the 3DS. I do not have one of those either. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I do not. <laughs> But I, I thoroughly enjoyed Xenoblade Chronicles X, and so if and when I do get a Switch, that will probably be one of the first titles I buy. And in fact, I might just wait until that game is out mm -hmm. 
because I'm a fan of JRPGs. I will have Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Wii U. I'm not really going to need it for the Switch. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about like the Joy-Con controllers? They said that it's got this HD rumble feature. Yeah. Where they show basically like you could shake it and, and feel like it's a glass with ice in it. Yeah. That that that, that uh, example seemed a little absurd to me, but... Uh, I guess at the same time, that's kind of interesting. It gives you, I guess, a different dynamic uh, for, uh, you know, your motion controls. Right. But that's still a very strange uh, leap uh, advancement in in motion control technology. I guess so. Now, what I've seen online is that they're comparing it to whatever the new iPhone has to where, like, if you touch certain parts of the screen, that certain part will vibrate. Hmm. I guess give you that that haptic feedback. I guess it's called. Um, I don't know if how game developers are going to even use this feature. Yeah. Um, and how it's gonna you know come across and in as far as gameplay goes. Now they did show one thing on the Joy-Con controller that I thought was interesting is that it can like sense 3D space. Mm -hmm. It could tell the difference between a rock paper scissors with your hands. Yeah. So I think that's gonna be interesting. And I think the one two switch game that's going to be coming out at launch where basically it's people can play games with each other without necessarily even looking at the screen. It kind of looks like it's a tech demo mm -hmm. and it's going to come out at $40. So that, that to me seems like something that should be included yeah. as a pack in game. But as far as I can tell from watching the presentation, there isn't going to be a pack in game for mm. it. That being said, Nintendo talked about their online services, which they are actually going to start charging money for, but it's going to be free at launch, mm -hmm. and then eventually later on in the year, it, they're going to start charging for it. But you're going to get free NES, Super Nintendo, and I believe Nintendo 64 games that are like free for the month, mm -hmm. kind of like PlayStation Plus and, and Xbox. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes and, and see mm -hmm. if it's worth it. Right. Now, what... A Redditor that I saw online had a great idea, and it would be awesome, but very unlikely if Nintendo uh, took this advice, was, you know, you have your paid-for online service, okay, by Nintendo, but what Nintendo has that a lot of these other game console makers don't have is a vast backlog of video games mm. and make them free-to-play streaming like you would like a Netflix service. Interesting. And I think that would be really cool, and it would make it worth the money for it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it is. We're already kind of used to it as console gamers on the PlayStation 4. You're on the Xbox of paying that monthly or yearly fee. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of, you know, either way on it. It just depends on how much it is, what kind of features it's going to have, um, and that's really going to determine whether or not I buy that when I eventually get the Switch. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm still interested. Like, I watched that whole press conference. I watched all the release stuff. I watched all of the, the tech that they were talking about. And I was like, I really want one of these things. I do. But I don't I don't feel like it's going to be necessary to get it day of launch. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> you're going to be bored unless you're just going to play Zelda. But, I mean, you can finish a Zelda game maybe in a week or two. Right. Like, okay, so... A couple of years ago when I got my Xbox One, uh, again, it was right towards the beginning of launch. There were not a whole he heck of a lot of titles. Right. Uh, so I ended up just, because I wasn't interested in Rise, I wasn't interested in Forza or any of the, the launch titles for the Xbox One, but I had played Black Flag, Assassin's oh, Creed Black game. Flag, uh, on the 360, and I loved it. So I just got that, and I played that game for like a month or two before something good finally came out. <laughs> <laughs> but like I was still playing that same game for like a month or two. Uh, I don't know that you can. I mean, I don't know what the scope of Breath of the Wild is going to be. I don't well, know. Well, apparently how... it's huge. Yeah, but like, is and, there going to be a vast much... open world? Is there going to be that much stuff to do in it? Well, though? you would think with as long as they've spent making the game, <laughs> that there should, <laughs> there very well should be. There, I mean, for the ten-year development time that Fifteen had, they had quite a lot of True. stuff that you can do in that. True, and I haven't even finished that yet. Um, so I don't know. To me, the three hundred dollar price tag is a little steep mm. because you can get a PlayStation Four and an Xbox One now for less than that. Mm -hmm. um, so. 
it's not necessarily a next gen console. It may be a next gen concept, mm-hmm. but it's not going to have the processing power of the PlayStation Four or the Pro or the Xbox or the Xbox One S or the Scorpio or whatever is coming out soon. Right. So it's not going to really be able to compete with those consoles on that level. I do think that you know you're going to be able to get a console experience on a handheld, which is going to be one of these things that is going to be. A selling point on it Mm -hmm. you know the fact that it's got a kickstand you can take it and just place it in front of you and use the same controller that you would at home uh i think that's going to be a selling point for it because you know you've got a 3ds you have a psp psv or whatever you're still playing on the screen right now you can sit down with it in front of you and play it but i mean it's like what a six and a half inch display Mm. Uh, and again, and, and we don't want to we don't right. want to perpetuate misinformation. I have absolutely no idea how big the display is. It's not very big. Um, and what's it going to be like playing split screen games like on Mario a, Kart or something like with that, somebody else on a very big? tiny screen? Yeah. yeah. So I would like to get my hands on one and mm. play it for a good amount of time before I actually invest in it. I think. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll have to wait till someone we know buys one. And in fact, that's kind of how I got into the Wii U. Was someone I knew had one and went over to his house. We ended up playing it all night, and I bought one the like the next day. Nice, yeah. So it's 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 hard to to gauge my level of excitement because on one hand, I think that Nintendo really needs to hit one out of the park, mm-hmm. but I still think that they're kind of screwing up on it a little bit. Maybe they should have pushed the release date back to Christmas of 2017, so yeah. at least. They could have a better launch library. Um, I do know that Breath of the Wild is a game that has been highly anticipated. But since it's coming out for the Wii U at launch, are Wii U owners going to be quick to hop on the Switch bandwagon whenever the game that they've been wanting is going to be out for the system that they already own? I could spend three hundred and sixty dollars and buy a Nintendo Switch Plus Breath of the Wild, or I could spend sixty bucks <laughs> and buy Breath of the Wild and just play it, and then wait till more games come out. I mean, really, in my honest opinion, because I'm a huge Mario fan, I think I'd rather just wait until Mario comes out, mm. or at least Xenoblade Two. The Mario Odyssey game looks very strange to me. Grand Theft Mario, dude. Yeah, I mean, you see him like. You know, Mario looking like Mario running around this cityscape and like bouncing on cars and like normal shaped people walking around. <laughs> Proportionate him. people. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you if you watch that trailer, it shows him in different levels, too. So yeah. that might be some dimension that he transports to. And, and you know, it it's probably canon somewhere that Mario isn't of this universe Mm. (laughs) he's of an alternate universe where people are shaped like cartoon characters (laughs) uh but it's a mario game yeah and mario games are always fun oh yeah so i think that's going to be the the big one i really i i really think they should have waited until they had that mario title Mm. at launch because what con what nintendo console has launched without a mario title available yeah I don't remember one. Yeah. So, well, I, mean, I, I don't know. I think the Wii did because Super Mario, New Super Mario Wii and Super Mario Galaxy both didn't come out till after the release of the Wii. Hmm. So maybe... Was there was there a new one that launched with the Wii U? Yeah, it was, uh, there was two. There was Super Mario 3D World and then New Super Mario U. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and so they're also getting... Um, There's a bunch of third par- uh, third party uh, companies that are making games for them too. Yeah, like they brought the attached. Sega guys out, and right? And there's going to be a new Sonic game, which looks like an old Sonic game. Yeah, a new Sonic game that looks like an old Sonic game. <laughs> but you know, if you've played any of the 3D Sonic games, they're just not as good as the side-scrolling ones. And I think that's a step in the right direction for them to take a step back. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, that's a good point. Like, I've been watching Team Four Star play through Shadow the Hedgehog, that old GameCube game. Is that the one where Sonic fucks a regular chick? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and they're playing it, and it's terrible. And like, it makes me think of like Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 and stuff. I was like, I mean, those games were kind of fun on the consoles they came out on. There's a game. But they were not very good. There's a Sonic game on the Wii U. Uh, I haven't played the full game. I did download the demo and play it. I believe it's called Sonic the Lost World or something like that, Mm. um, where it's very similar to Super Mario Galaxy, where you can kind of, you know, it's instead of planets, it's more like cylindrical 
air levels mm. kind of where you can go up and around and over that's kind of interesting it, it looks cool and, and the demo was fun i just haven't found it in a store for a price that i want to pay for it yet yeah and, and that's really the the driving factor between you know what i'm gonna spend on a game is how much i want to play it and yeah. that's just not one of those games i really want to play i am like it's interesting <laughs> to me that uh, that Bethesda is going to be releasing Skyrim. On it's like the a what a six seven year old game. Yeah, like that's that's the thing. Like they're not making a new Elder Scrolls property or something right. like a whole new game for the Switch. They're just re releasing Skyrim. And they just again. they just re released it on PS4 and, and the Xbox HD One. remaster. Just yeah, the, released. the special edition. It's not just an HD remaster. They like redid all the textures hmm. for the game because um, it was already in HD when it came out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah. So unless you're just a super hardcore Skyrim fan and just want to be able to like leave the house with it, then I guess I could see the appeal to it. But, you know, it's just to me, it's it just seems a little weak. Mm-hmm. It just seems the the presentation was a little weak. And I'm just wondering if Nintendo is ever going to be that powerhouse that it used to be again. And and I really don't think it is. I know that they try to be innovative, which, you know, I can definitely tip my hat to them uh, for that, you know, mm-hmm. with the Wii and the Wii U. Whereas, you know, the Wii was one of the best-selling consoles of all time, but it was so gimmicky. Yeah. The Wii U was... was criminally under marketed mm-hmm. and underpowered mm-hmm. um and it just seems like they're kind of going that same route but you know in the in the days of ps4 ps pro xbox one xbox scorpio and all these is there room for another console that's just the same thing mm-hmm and and really there's not so you kind of have to have something that's going to stand out yeah um plus you know the 3ds is very successful and hopefully they can merge those two markets but you know from reports that i've read the way nintendo is talking is that they're not done with the 3ds and that line so i think if they decide to put out a different handheld on top of the switch that might that, be a bad idea. That i feel like that would be kind of a terrible idea because it seems like this the Switch is like an amalgamation of all of the innovations that Nintendo has ever brought to gaming. Like, they even had that video that they aired at, like, the beginning of the press conference that was talking about all of the various things that Nintendo consoles have done for gaming since the very beginning. Like, they talked about the portability of Game Boy and that mm-hmm. being a thing for the first time ever. They talked about the motion controls. They talked about the analog stick, the Z button, all that stuff right. from the 64. And the rumble feature that was built into... The shoulder buttons yeah, on the, the SNES controller. Yeah, <laughs> the X and Y buttons being added for the SNES. Where was uh, Rob NES. the Robot, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... So, like, that's what the Switch is. It's every innovation that Nintendo has ever brought into the gaming industry all in one console. All in one Frankenstein (laughs) console. (laughs) Yeah. But it sounds interesting. Like, I still want to see it. It is going to be interesting. It is super gimmicky. Yeah. Um, And it just, really, they just, the problem that I see is... It's not coming out swinging. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, Breath of the Wild, a new Zelda title, that's huge. But I think they're shooting themselves in the foot by releasing it for the Wii U at the same time as it's coming out for the Switch. Because as a Wii U owner myself, I'm not really going to be in much of a hurry to go out and buy one since Mm -hmm. the game that I've been waiting for is coming out for a console I already own. Yeah. (laughs) And I think maybe that's what they're shooting for, is that the Wii U was so criminally undersold to people. Like... To two not, people, not literally, hell of, literally two people bought it. Not a hell of a lot of people actually own Wii U's, so maybe that's what they're counting on. That since so few people actually own Wii U's, that the people that have them can go ahead and buy Breath of the Wild when it comes out. Good, that's good for them. But for the rest of the people that you know do want to try out this gimmicky new thing, like I haven't owned a uh, a new Nintendo console since the GameCube. Wow. Like my grandma owned a Wii. And I would play on it. Just on about everybody's grandma owned a Wii. <laughs> that's that's the crazy thing about the Wii is that it was sold to more like casual audiences, mm-hmm. not hardcore gamers. In fact, I had a friend who uh, she bought a Wii when it first came out, and she just kept going on and on about how great it was. And I would go over and play it a little bit, 
And this was whenever I was actually kind of into Call of Duty at the time mm-hmm. and was playing it on the PS3. And she's like, come over here and play Call of Duty. And I'm playing it. I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> this is just terrible. She's like, it's just the same. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> and she's like, no, it looks just the same. I'm like, whatever. Bring your shit over and we'll put it side by side. And you tell me that it looks the same, you idiot. <laughs> Sorry, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know what do you think of the wii u folks uh leave us a comment below let us know i'm sorry the wii u the nintendo switch well either i've called either. it yeah <laughs> if you have a wii u let me know yeah does uh, does the the high price point of the switch at launch and a lack of games make you less likely as a an already wii u owner to, to actually to go one. out and get a switch or me? are you such a nintendo fanboy Mm -hmm. that you're just gonna buy it anyway because (laughs) you just love nintendo i'm not so Uh, and i having not owned a nintendo console since the gamecube will probably be picking this up as soon as i actually have the money for well you know what maybe you'll be doing a review on it instead of me (laughs) but you can always just bring it over and we can play it together we can play it together bring it to the bar man (laughs) no don't do that (laughs) don't bring it we can can shoot each other in the bar with the one two switch game there you go (laughs) yeah 